I think everyone would agree that we want to avoid a 1984-esque future. As we learned in the last video, there are major implications to increased adoption of advanced neurotechnologies. Our data could be stolen, the systems could be manipulated, or we might need to redefine what it means to be human. Corporations and governments will take the first crack at setting these boundaries, but it is our place to keep them in check. Hi, I'm Harrison Canning, and in this video, I will show you some organizations and companies that could make waves in the neurotechnology space. We will talk about existing companies in the industry, as well as big tech as it positions itself to jump in. As with the previous lesson on ethics, we will not offer opinions on what is right or wrong about a company's approach or offer personal critiques about the company. We are not being compensated in any way for choosing the companies in this video. For each company, we will give you some background into their operations, their mission, and why they might be interested in brain-computer interfacing. While the neurotech field is quite broad, we will only focus on companies interested in brain-computer interfacing. Let's start with big tech. The social media giant, Facebook, has been making heavy investments in neurotech under its Reality Labs wing. Facebook purchased Control Labs, made investments in sensory substitution technologies, and launched their own brain-computer interfacing team. All of their brain-computer interface efforts coincide with their strategic investments in VR since they purchased Oculus in 2014. Facebook announced the start of their brain-computer interfacing program at their F8 event in 2017. Their stated goal was to allow users to type at 100 words per minute by just imagining themselves talking. They said that they planned to accomplish this using a combination of neuroimaging and machine learning, meaning this would be a non-invasive device. Although we are well outside their original two-year timeline, the project is still continuing and the group has announced updates in March of 2020. In late 2019, Facebook acquired Control Labs for a cool 50 million US dollars. Control Labs had previously demonstrated an EMG and accelerometer-based cuff that could determine finger actuation and hand orientation and positioning to a high degree of accuracy. This move was likely to develop controllers and gain talent for its VR efforts. Microsoft threw its hat into the ring in June of 2018 when it launched a brain-computer interface research group. Since then, they have published two papers and a series of talks on the subject. Interestingly, all of their produced materials are centered around consumer devices and audition, with a special focus on ergonomics. This suggests that they are working towards commercialization of some type of EEG-based headphone system. We have seen similar technologies hit the market with applications from focus to sports training, but both in the headphone form factors. Microsoft also lists MEG, FNIRS, PET, and fMRI as technologies of interest on their website. As this project matures, it is likely that it will bleed into Microsoft's VR efforts. While Apple hasn't made any official announcements about their own brain-computer interfacing systems, they are in an excellent position to act. Apple has always been concerned with making a seamless user experience where interacting with technology feels more natural. In recent years, they have been focusing heavily on wearables such as AirPods and the Apple Watch, the latter of which already has some biofeedback capabilities. They also have been teasing their entry into the VR AR space and are set to release a headset in 2023. Finally, as a small teaser and clear sign that they are talking to neurotechnologists, the CEO of OpenBCI, Connor Rusumano, appeared briefly in their Apple event. Okay, let's move on to companies already working on brain-computer interfaces, starting with the one that I would wager almost all of you watching this have heard of, Neuralink. Elon Musk's Neuralink was publicly launched in March of 2017. The announcement was made the day after Facebook announced its BCI project. Shortly after, a detailed but understandable report was commissioned by Musk and was released on the website Wait But Why, detailing Neuralink's longer-term objectives and reason for being. The future product was described as a wizard hat that would act as a third layer of cognition of the brain, referring to the first as the limbic system and the second as the cortex. This third layer would be a high bandwidth connection between the human brain and an AI system. This plays into Musk's public concerns about AI replacing humans. If you can't beat them, join them, he says. The announcement generated a lot of buzz, making the words brain interface more common in public vernacular and investor circles. Their neuro-lace approach uses individually threaded electrodes implanted by a precise robot. Since the electrodes are individually placed, they can avoid puncturing blood vessels and move with the brain 
which should greatly increase their longevity. We learned in their August 2020 event that the electrodes connect to a module implanted into the skull that can be concealed under the skin. Neuralink showed off a real-time demo of 1,024 electrodes working in a live pig. The electrodes can be used for both stimulation and recording. Elon Musk says that they plan for the implantation process to be similar to LASIK eye surgery. Remember the BrainGate interface? The interface that allowed Kathy Hutchinson to move a robotic arm? That only made use of 96 electrodes, so we can only imagine where this highly scalable technology will take brain-computer interfacing. Similar to Neuralink, Paradromics is developing a high-bandwidth implantable brain chip that will enable two-way communication, both stimulating recording neurons, between brains and computers. Their chip boasts an impressive 10,000 electrodes, two orders of magnitude higher than is currently standard, which should open the door to more advanced machine interface systems. Their current plan is to build a communication device for paralyzed persons that they claim will give the user the ability to converse, quote, fluently. Current state-of-the-art systems only offer a few words per minute, so this would be a major step up. The device does, however, appear to be a rigid chip design, so even with the extra small electrodes that the company boasts, the device will likely cause scarring that will only make the interface usable for a few years, although the data is not out on this. Kernel, similar to Neuralink, has the final goal of allowing humans to coexist and co-evolve with its machines. Its founder, Brian Johnson, invested $100 million to develop the brain implants. Kernel promises to improve neurodegenerative diseases, a big claim as, so far, brain implants have only been used in paraplegic persons and for medical trials. They are developing hardware and software at the moment to treat people with Parkinson's disease. Most recently, they have been making strides in non-invasive tech as well. Their OP MEG systems have shown the potential to improve MEG, making it more portable and lowering the signal-to-noise ratio. Synchron is developing a minimally invasive brain-computer interface system that allows the user to type using their specially designed interface without opening the skull. Yes, you heard that right. They are placing electrodes right on the motor cortex without needing to open the skull. How? With a platinum electrode grid called the stentrode that is inserted through the brain's vasculature, the need for open brain surgery is removed. The stentrode then is absorbed into the walls of the blood vessel. This positioning allows it to get close enough to neurons to record their activity without causing scarring. The company then uses these signals in their BrainOS software to give the user a typing experience they claim will be faster than texting once trained. Up to this point, we have talked about massive companies that are still well within research stages. If you are looking to get access to BCI technology right now, we recommend you take a look at these companies. OpenBCI is an open-source brain-computer interface company founded in 2013. The Open in OpenBCI stands for Open Source, a decentralized development model which encourages collaboration from a global community. OpenBCI boards are used to measure and record electrical activity and can be used for brainwaves, EEG, muscle signals, EMG, and heart signals, EKG. On OpenBCI's website, they say the following about their mission. The biggest challenges we face in understanding what makes us who we are will not be solved by a single company, an institution, or even an entire field of science. These discoveries will only, and should only, be made through an open forum of shared knowledge and concerted effort by people from a variety of backgrounds. We work to harness the power of the open source movement to accelerate ethical innovation of human-computer interface technologies. For nearly two decades, Emotive has produced attainable consumer EEG devices and accompanying software targeted at researchers and neurotech enthusiasts. Emotive's main brain-computer interface is the EPOC, which is a 14-channel EEG system which utilizes saline-based wet electrodes. Emotive offers a large number of devices and software products which can be utilized for research and consumer use cases. GTEC was founded in 1999 in Austria and develops high-performance brain-computer interfaces and neurotechnologies for invasive and non-invasive recordings. GTEC's products are internationally used in clinical environments and for research purposes, such as the analysis of the brain, heart, or muscle activity, brain assessments of severe brain injuries and disorders of consciousness, motor rehabilitation after stroke, neuromarketing, deep brain stimulation, brain mapping, neuroprosthesis control, communication, painting, and closed-loop invasive and non-invasive BCI experiments. The MUSE headband measures brain activity with four EEG sensors. Brain activity is then processed and turned into audio feedback to the user. 
The main purpose of the Muse headband is to produce a state of relaxation in its users, and audio from light noises such as birds chirping is frequently used to produce this state of relaxation. Muse devices sync with a mobile phone to provide real-time brain monitoring and aid in meditation. It has been scientifically vetted by several studies. It is a great and cheap way to play with your brainwaves. This is a rapidly growing space with new, highly innovative companies popping up every day. Remember that we only talked about brain-computer interfacing companies, but the field of neurotechnology is much broader. We recommend taking a look at Neurotech Reports and Neurotech Analytics for in-depth reports on the industry. Neurotech Analytics also has many information-rich infographics that are ready for your next slideshow, and a 2D and 3D mind map which provides info on 450 plus companies, investors, and hubs organized by their Neurotech market segment. In this lesson, we covered the major industry players in neurotechnology. Thanks for sticking around, and we'll see you next time.